Bokatov, Chevre again. Uh, it's Eric Solomon, rabbi in Raleigh, North Carolina. New day, uh, again with the coronavirus. As I'm here to daven again, offering a little piece of Torah, a little teaching, hopefully to give some inspiration. I know each day is hard on so many of our hearts. So, you know, doing my best here to offer what me and Rabbi Jenny can offer for hopefully some inspiration to all of you, some chizuk and strength. So this morning, my Torah, I'm calling this the Torah of small talk. And um, I'm going to base it on one of the classic texts. Hang with me here. Could start, start, start a little morose, but hopefully it'll be a bit more uplifting. And um, it's based on Psalm 23. Famous Psalm, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Gates al Mavit, Lo Irara Kieta Imadi. I will not fear for you, Holy One, are with me. And that famous line, you know, really emphasizes the idea that you know I don't walk alone, that we don't walk alone, and the importance of what it means to feel present, to feel guided, and to feel the company of others that we don't walk alone. That, of course, is the irony and paradox of this of this moment is that uh, for the sake of safety and security and and not promoting the communicating the disease, we we have to be more alone physically and very careful. We've talked about before and everyone hopefully at this point knows. So what I want to want to add here about the issue of not walking alone um, when I. Uh, I mean, still, like, I've been doing this, this work as this holy Avodat Kodesh as a rabbi for about 20 years now. But, um, you know, when I started and I, my training, you know, and some of you know I'm a, I'm a some of an intense person. Uh, I, you know, people, my kids like to make fun of me about it. And when I was trained in terms of chaplaincy and, and being with people in times of struggle and need, you know, I, um, I understood and I was trained in the idea and I've accepted and I willingly the mitzvah of walking with people. I mean, one of the things I think clergy do, this is like our holy task, is not leave people alone in their most highest moments, please God, but also in their most challenging and struggling moments, not to be alone. Something that all of us do as good friends, as family, as good communities, we don't leave people alone. And this time, the way we're, we're doing that, and I know some of you, are, many of you doing it already, but to encourage, continue, not to leave people alone means really to call them, to text them, to FaceTime, things like this. This is how we don't leave people alone walking through the valley on their own, particularly those who are, for whatever reasons, perhaps in more isolated conditions. Um, but I want to talk about what those conversations are like. So, you know, when I... In my training, and you know, I go into rooms, or and, and still to this day, you know, people before surgeries, people who are facing life and death decisions, people with illness, whatever it may be, people struggling, and you know, I would often try to go to the core of what is going on spiritually, to bring up conversations about God, about meaning, and you know, for the most part, that is is uh, well received. But many, many times when I interact with people and it used to, you know, confuse me, uh, especially early on, you know, how are you rabbi? Tell me how is your family? Tell me something about, you know, even sports. You know, some of you know, I'm a, I'm a little bit sports fanatic. And I, you know, when early on in my rabbi, I thought, come on, you know, I don't want to talk about sports. You know, I, this is, I'm here, to, we're in a hospital room or I don't want to discuss whatever i'm here to talk about you and i'm here to talk about what you're facing this is this is the core but you know time if, if you listen if you give it time uh i hope wisdom is some wisdom is achieved some chokhma and i've come to learn you know what i call the torah of small talk you know there are times when we're walking through the valley when we want to talk about what we're facing and we need to and the idea of being present and holding that, I think, is a profound spiritual practice and spiritual message. What it means to be religiously centered means to understand that we can't avoid the biggest questions. And at the same time, there's a power in, in distracting oneself and not being so always focused on the most intense questions. 
And this issue, what it means to walk with someone with small talk, I think rises to the core right now. I, I think I'm telling you some the Torah you already know, that there's power in giving a call to people and talking with them just to schmooze, just to kibitz, to chat, just to hear what's going on. It's one of the sad things about no sports going on right now is it's a unifying, generally safe place to just talk about you know something we admire and enjoy and not to always be on the most serious issues. The key is to reach out and to call. The key is not to, in this moment to be modest and say, I don't want to bother or the key now is to actually have a little bit of, I'm going to say self, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a boosting of the self and say, the mitzvah now is to reach out. And in the conversation with someone else who might be going through even more difficulty than, and struggle than you are, is to let small talk happen. It's okay. It's okay. You may start the conversation by saying, how are you? And more open. And maybe it leads off. That's okay. It's okay for me. It's okay for you. The key is the call. Many, many times in times of struggle in people's lives, in my work as a rabbi, the number one complaint, you know, deep, deep pain that people feel in a time of struggle is they know the people that reached out and the people that did not. And even if those people reached out, don't do perfect job or it's filled with small talk, oh, people appreciate it. They don't forget. They understand it's deep uplift to be reached out to. So I want to encourage the midst of the moment is pikuach nefesh, saving life, but it's also saving the, the emotional life, the, the soul. So texting and reaching out to even a wider circle, including people you may not know that well. People are doing this within our congregation. You'll soon hear more about opportunities to reach out to all of our membership. I'm doing this, our staff, but also our members to each other. You may not know them well or at all. This is not the time to be shy about that. It's time to reach out and say, you know, even we just talk about the beautiful weather lately or something about our families or something about our lives that seems somewhat trivial, that's okay too, because you're walking with them literally through the valley. So I uh, wish everyone again, God willing, a good day. It really a blessing of small talk, of even distraction, to dedicating part of your day to the intensity of what's happening, but also part of your day to, to let it go and to find other places for our mind and our soul to wander is totally okay. In fact, I'd say it's a mitzvah of pikuach neshama, of saving, saving the soul. Okay, hope this gave you not too much distraction, but inspiration for the day to come. Bokertov, Nia Bekesha, we'll be in touch. Take care.